you know, coming to you live from World Championship in San Jose. Welcome to the Living Legends Podcast. On that note, welcome to Living Legends Podcast, everybody. <laughs> Jumping straight jumping straight into it uh, i'm your host for today my name's az from going in gaming and joined by uh, kel as always red zone rogue how's it going hello i'm doing good how are you all doing today we have a lot of like fun a surprising amount of stuff to talk about i'll say i, I think like like two days ago we were we were planning yeah. the podcast and we we're like yeah we'll just wing it and then all, all of a sudden we're, we have like a ton of stuff to talk about so it's gonna be a good one absolutely yeah, and uh, as always, as well, uh, filling it's in me. for it's either me. one Thanks of us when we drop out. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Um, <laughs> Ian, how's it going? Good, good. Um, always a pleasure to jump on board with you guys and uh, talk some fab exactly. and uh, and some other stuff, as we always tend to do with the tangents. Yep. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, as, as Kel said, um, last couple of days... Um, a lot of news has come out, um, which is pretty yeah. exciting to talk about. I think there's, um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Loads of articles come out, loads of different things that we can delve into on this podcast in particular. Um, but before we do our weeks in fab, flesh and blood, what have we been doing? Who wants to start? Mm. <laughs> I, can, I can do a quick one because it's, it's just like content. So for me, it's, it's just been it's just been content. Yeah. Um, Mm. Playing playing some decks. I've been really enjoying my two favorite decks, Lexi and uh, Arachne, and I I have my fingers crossed, and I have you know it, it's pretty safe to say that both of those decks will get some really nice stuff in Outsiders because they're the two yeah. two of the big classes, um, and then also Ninja as well. And I've also been enjoying my 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 hundred win my hundred wins Katsu deck. So um, mm. yeah, just just kind of like keeping up normal stuff, doing some content, making videos about a lot of the news that we're talking about later. And I'll, so I'll, we'll talk about that when, when the time comes. So that's basically been my yeah. week. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, obviously here in New Zealand, we are uh, running up to the calling next week. Um, yep. Next Saturday or next Friday, um, the three days of fab stuff kicks off. Um, so a lot of people are just been wanting to practice non-stop for uh cc i i have decided that i'm not actually going to play the um the classic constructed calling um instead focusing on the side events and uh, the blitz battle hardened on the sunday uh as oh. well as um just you know jamming uh some more social gaming um because there's going to be a lot of people who aren't normally in auckland a lot of uh internationals and stuff so I, i'm taking this opportunity yeah. to uh to you know more catch up with people than necessarily yeah. stress. Um, also, the current meta, the current ice meta. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not <laughs> sure I can, uh, yeah. I can focus, focus my way through it. So, um, uh, so in in regards to that, I played a UPF game. Um, nice. Got to play Bard, which nice. was which was great. Um, that was that's always fun. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to crack out a York game at the calling. Uh, with some people that'd be cool um and also uh sort of semi connected to this but obviously this will come out afterwards um uh kel and i will be playing some mm. commoner which i've been yeah. uh i've been uh jumping in and uh because there is a law book commoner uh, uh a law book prize commoner on the on the friday at the calling and that is that's kind of actually my focus um uh, oh, okay. Uh, is to try and win that law book um, so I can get it signed mm. um, can, by a bunch of people while they're all in the same place, which is I, which is cool. I can put you to the paces. Yeah. There's some some decks in here that are just fun, like my my Sunkiss Moonwish Kano. But I also have a pretty nice Ira deck and a pretty nice Kasai deck that I can yeah. like, put, put. Yeah. And so and so basically, I'm I'm trying to decide whether or not I stick with my my regular brute um stuff for commoner or mm. um move to move to dash who um who was actually dash the very really first cool. commoner event um we ever we ever ran i um i ran i ran dash to top four top or top top eight i think top eight um at that and i've always really enjoyed dash in that in that format so um so i've got a dash deck i've got a i've got a reinard deck um and yeah just gonna still try and Try and make some decisions with uh, Kel's help later later today. But yeah, that's as I said, the rest the rest of Auckland are all in uh, in testing mode for the coin. Um, 
I just saw on Twitter today that Kyle McCreath is uh, has has called his shot and that he's going to be winning, <laughs> of course, winning the call the call in Auckland. So uh, you know, shout out to uh, shout out to the OG Bravo player and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> uh, though I have heard him say the same thing about numerous other events. So we'll we'll see if uh, the the law of the law of averages of just saying you're going to win every big event at at some point you're going to be right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> love you, Kale. Love you, Kale. <laughs> That's me. If you keep saying it, eventually it will happen. You know, manifest it as well That's as right. you know, foresee the, the the actual happening. You can say all along that you was going to do yeah. it anyway. So it's a win win. Yeah, told you. Yeah, I, I, I told, told you, right? you so. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Set enough times, people will listen eventually. Um, hmm. But um, yeah, yeah um, I've, I've had a few things going on this week. Um, so uh, literally. Just just done the Azalea Colt number fourteen with um, some of the Malaysian crew. Uh, Stormgate Games uh, came on with uh, an Armory winner um, called Jan Wei, who won an Armory with Azalea recently after playing fifty nice. Armories before winning his first one with Azalea. So fair nice. play to him for sticking it out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I I made your comparison as well, Kel, where I was like, oh yeah, uh, flesh and blood, especially with Azalea, is like Dark Souls. You have to die over and over and over again to <laughs> you know to make sure that you get the crux of the hero. You know, you, Azalea is one of those ones that you do have to put yourself through the ringer in order to understand. Um, so yeah. fair play uh, for the resilience of of carrying on Jian Wei on uh, the Azalea Cult Malaysian episode, which was good. Also, um, also. Uh, g- Good time to uh, be hitting your strides with it just before, uh, hopefully, a bunch of uh, um, help comes as well. So, Ooh, yeah, 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 get ahead yeah. of the pack, get ahead of yeah, the exactly. Pack. Well, exactly, <laughs> we could talk a little bit about that later and talk about some of the stuff they showed off, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, and then uh, I filmed Bravo Bros episode two. So, speaking of Bravo, um, we'll, we'll try. We'll, we'll reach out to Kale eventually, see if he wants to come on. He's obviously a decorated Bravo player. Um, so, uh, the next episode that's coming out is about all the hammers that Bravo can about, use. I was about to say, if if you tell him you're going to drink beer while you do it, he'll he'll be there. He'll be up for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'll try. I'll try and convince him why Sledge of Anvilheim is the best hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Tunic Bravo. No, not really. It's sweet. Um, um, yeah, I, I do love it. I do love it. It is good. Um, but um, but yeah, Bravo. Bravo I was about to say, you're two. sleeping on Talshar Bravo. That's the, that's the real... That's the real... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the that's real, the real spice. Pascal uh, as well. Uh, shout, shout out to Pascal. He does actually mention the, the Talashar in the, in, the, uh, in the video as well, which I thought was hilarious. Um, do you, love, do you, do? Love Pascal. you already have like a Nothos, which is like a really, really good weapon. Come on, <laughs> yeah. Pascal love... does make some good points against uh, against for Talishar Bravo, though. To be fair, I mean everyone does. There's the there's the people who are like diehard like Talishar Lexi, which is insane. Um... Oh yeah, brilliant, brilliant deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like you, know, you run, run, run Talisar Lexi, where you can't use like ninety percent of any, her stuff. Like, can't use any bow or any like uh, arrows or anything that pumps arrows. Oh, funny. That's why we have these discussions, right? That's why we have these random weird videos, just so we can chat about this random stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, and f- and finally as well, um, oh, two more things actually I'll mention. Uh, so so one of them is is um is going to be coming out at some stage and that is a teaser video for mm. the go again the go again gaming spoiler card which uh you both have seen i have already it very good um it's so, like uh, a so banger yeah. like seriously like i don't want to hype it up too much but i'm gonna hype it up too much i think it's like one of the best <laughs> like little teasers i've ever seen for flesh and blood it's really good so <laughs> If you are not Cheers. already subscribed to Go Again Gaming, you should go subscribe to Go Again Gaming so you can like see it when it goes live. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm going to be sharing it around. I told Jim when after he showed it to me, I was like, uh, "Let me know when it goes live, and I'll and I'll share it on all my things because I, I think it's very." Oh good. yeah, I, and Oscar buzz already for Jim's performance in that. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant! Isn't it? It's 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 like good. <laughs> it's like if he doesn't get best supporting actor, not for that. I I we riot, oh. we see, riot. Yeah. What we J- Jim has what i would call a method acting style right he 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 embodies the spirit of a dejected azalea player yeah 
I really felt like he'd just lost a game by running out of cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just <laughs> looking at his board state, just like, oh, what just happened? Like, you, uh, you're like, you you're know like, oh, that he's been uh, there. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. like, you're like, oh, cool. I, I, I feel, even though you didn't say it, this is like the end of a uh, um, three of a kind, no arrows drawn. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. That, 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 that's gonna, that's going to come out, and I'll probably I'll probably leave it until after this podcast has re- has released, so people that are listening to this can then go and see it. Essentially. Sweet. Um. So um. So yeah. Probably be the end of next week, I expect. Um. And finally, just I've just had a load load of stuff going on this week, and uh, I've I've come to the conclusion that the UPF series is coming back, but it's going to be on my channel um so there's going to be pat i've already got three panels for it as well um ian you will be you will be in one of them that's for sure maybe we can do a living legends one living Ooh. legends and extended universe Ooh, um that'd be fun. so uh, I, was about say, I was about to say why don't you put bill in and and and, and, and to, to play for the third spot on the on the on the podcast yeah. it seems to be him that i'm always replacing <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah that's pretty much it so um yeah, quite a lot, quite a lot going on, uh, which is which is always good. And there is a lot going on right now as well with Flesh and Blood. Uh, we've loaded articles have just come out recently. Um, so uh, smooth it was, segue. It's good. It's good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so it's weird. It's weird because if you look back at the old episodes, right, that we did. If you remember, like when I came into them, I had a whole bloody document full of like pictures and scripts and everything, and now yeah. it's just and now it's just bullet points. Now it's just bullet points because we know how it flows between yeah. us. You know? Yeah, see, see, you, you've devolved into where I was. That's, that's where I was. I was like the bullet point. And then Bill is yeah. just completely wing it. He's just like, well, I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> Literally, and, yeah. And, and then yeah. Our, our standards are going to keep shrinking down until I'm no longer the bullet point. I just wing it. And then you're going to be like, yeah. eventually, like, just, just wing it. Everyone just, just wing, wing it. Wing it. <laughs> exactly. You can tell. Yeah. It's, it's actually funny. You could tell the ones where we wing it where it's like two hours long. Because like, for, it's like the reverse effect. You think we'd be shorter if we're winging it, but no, no. It means we're going on tangents. Much longer. It's like it's like yeah. two hours. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, have, the... you don't have that. We need to get to this next. Right. Right. That's great, True. guys. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> exactly. But you'll also notice as well, like the other lot, the other podcasts that are three, four hours long, like Zack Schneider, cut, Zack Schneider films, are the ones that Ian's on as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, messing around, obviously, um, but yeah, the the, <laughs> the first. I, I, um, used, I used to be on a roller derby podcast that our average if our average episode le- length was four hours. Oof, that's oh. a that's a lot. Yeah, people listen to it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and a good a good two and a half hours had nothing to do with roller derby. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's exactly we, exactly that. The, po- the podcast does occupy that space, right? Where yeah. if you want you want time filled. You know, you can listen to your favorite people when you're yeah. doing your work or whatever. What 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 we often got was people were like, "Yeah, I listen to you while I'm like cleaning the house on Saturdays." <laughs> so like, exactly. Like we were yeah, we it. were the thing in the background while they were doing the cleaning and stuff. <laughs> no, yeah. that's good. Like, like I, I think it's one of the first things we talked about on the podcast is like if we are the podcast mm. that you listen to where you're driving to work or like at your cubicle or or whatever, like that's perfect. That's like. Like I don't want to say that's what the goal is, but like that's what that's when I listen to podcasts is when I'm like doing other stuff. So if we can get occupy yeah. that space, uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, exactly. And when you say when you say listen to it in your cubicle, what do you what do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, cubicle like, means like the office toilet space, office. Well, <laughs> oh, no. okay. It's, the, it's it's the open office space where where there's multiple oh, things, well, I mean, and, they, and instead of being having offices if i i i got you i've watched office space if you're if you're listening to it like on the porcelain throne that's great too but like if you're if also if you're at, well, if you're you're at work yeah exactly <laughs> but if you're at work right and you're like doing spreadsheets or whatever and your your work lets you have like headphones on which i know a lot of places do um then shout out to alan yeah. who uh who uh constantly is listening to podcasts while at lss so yeah like what, on the what, on the porcelain throne as well. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 just I at work answer, on the I toilet. We answer that, but as someone who used to work in the same office as Alan, he always had headphones on in, in the office. 
Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Tangents are plenty already, already speaking about porcelain thrones and what have you. Actually, um, like small aside for like some people it helps people focus right like it, just having something to listen to like i know for me it helps me like j- just to have something going yeah. on helps me focus if it's like completely silent or whatever um i don't know it, it just i work better with like i don't know noise yeah um, you know what yeah, well, you know what what helps people focus as well if they had aim and aim counters like on the new bow that was uh, <laughs> and, oh my and God, the that's, that was so smooth. Not, not, as, hell, not as smooth as that. Not as smooth as that. <laughs> uh, that was well good. I just um, I just felt like we were really getting away from Az's really good segue into what we were talking about, and then we never actually started talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Lovely. Do, doing my job for me today, hosting this. Um, but. Um, but yeah, so this is the, the, the so the first sort of article that came out was about the armory kits. Yeah, well, the first one that's on our list for today, anyway. Um, and included within that armory kit was obviously promos for the spike with cards. Um, yep. So obviously the new spikes, um, and uh, and obviously the new bow as well. Uh, the new bow is called uh, Barbed Castaway. Um, so will they will the audience be able to see this video, listeners, video viewers? Oh, the card. Mm. Give me give me a second. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll pull it up while uh, while you while you talk. Sweet. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because I, I I know Kel, you you've speculated that you think this is the common slot bow, which I think it could be. I think it's the, but I, I also, think it's the token. I think it's the token bow actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like this. It's interesting because this doesn't feel like Riptide's bow, right? Like, it, but it, I mean, it we is. We don't though. know. If, I, if I, flavor I know, wise, it is. It, like, it, like it's it. it's weird though because it's got the aim the aim counter mechanic is the second part, which seems to be counterintuitive to the trap. Although then again, that's only with what we know of aim counters. So hope, yeah. you know, may, maybe it's something different. Yeah. I've got, a, I've got a theory for this as well. And that's uh, obviously, Ooh. so, so, Let so, me bar, get my so hat. let's get, let's get, let's get them on. <laughs> um, so let's read, let's read the whole card first. It's now on, it's now on screen. So cheers for that behind the scenes, Mr. Yeah. Red Zone Rogue. Uh, Operating the OBS live as we do this. Yeah. Um, so um, barbed castaway. So this is the promo, obviously. So we don't know whether it's going to be a token or what. It probably is, though. Uh, so once per turn instant for one resource, you may put an arrow card from your hand face up into your arsenal. So, you know, it's just putting something into your arsenal face up with, for one. Yeah. Um, so just, but it has to be not, an arrow, right? Has to be an yeah. arrow, yeah. yeah so um, so you but, can't put like that new attack action correct. card that we saw. Yeah. No, can't, no. can't put or, uh, or death touch. Can't put a trap in there. <laughs> well, no. we you might not need to though. But we'll talk about that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all part. It's all part of the theory that I've crafted. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably have as well by the sounds of it. Um, and then you have got the once per turn instance. So you've got two modes on here. The other, but the other mode is pay one. You may turn a face down uh, arrow in your arsenal face up. Get an aim counter. Um, so. Yeah, uh, obviously there's going to be accentuated arrows in this set, which care about aim counters. Obviously, we've already got some of them, but it just goes to show that there is going to be more aim counter stuff in here, uh, yeah. which is nice. Um, so it might be, you know, the, the value that you get from the aim counter might justify the, um, you know, putting it in there or it, turning it face up. But what I, I want to point out one thing before we start talking about like speculation uh, that's really mm. important to know about the bow. You cannot do both abilities on the same arrow in a turn. No. Because the first ability yeah. puts it face up, and the second ability has to turn it face up from being face down. So you can't actually use the bow on the same card in the same turn. Um, which, right. is, which is really important to note. But you can arsenal a card at the end of your turn, and then turn that card face up to put an aim counter on it, shoot it off, and if it has go again, you can use the to, to do the thing. But um, yeah, yeah, just, just to, to, to note, it's like... So- it's a little there worse a, than I thought, and I thought it was actually kind of bad to begin with. Well, there's, so we'll an, <laughs> there's another interesting point, though, right? Because one of them puts it face up, correct? Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, first the arrow. One. Yeah, yeah. So it puts, so it, it, puts it face up just like... With new, playing this bow with New Horizons means yeah. you could... Like, it's not the same arrow, but you could do both You could do both in, uh, in one turn, if I'm not mistaken. Although, if you've got the right maybe, sequence of cards, uh, yeah. No, yeah, you might another one and stuff. You could, if you already had an arrow face down, you could activate the second ability first to turn it face up, and then activate the first ability to put an to to put a slot in. Yeah. Because 
Uh, New Horizon, you have to have a card face up to give the extra arsenal slot anyway. Right. right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. it's a little, it's a little weird. Like this card's like a little, I don't know. But it does, it, it does, it does make it interesting that you know there there is a possibility that you could start looking at New Horizons outside of just Lexi. Well, with this boat. So I, I mean, mean, it's a little, it's a little clunky, but um, but um, it's a little bit easier. A little bit easier than the other bows that we have. Well, Dread, right. Dreadbore also lets you do something similar. Let me look it up real quick and see the exact text. Yeah, pay pay one, put a card from your uh, from your hand face up into your arsenal. It gets plus one, so it just puts it straight up face what face yeah. up. Yeah, right. so so yeah, you can you could use it with Dreadbore. The only difference, or you could use uh, New Horizon with Dreadbore and Azalea. The only difference is the Dreadbore is an action, not an instant. Yeah. 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 I yeah. do, I do, and I do like the fact for draft and seal that these are instants. Like, yeah, the fact of, of the the you know the that that I didn't win the dice roll, or you know for whatever reason I'm not going first. Um, I can still arsenal a card, turn one, and then draw up. Yeah, that's right. Kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's like yeah. the that's like the Lexi tech, right? Like anyone exactly. who's played exactly. who's played Lexi knows, like going. Second isn't that bad because you can still mulligan if your opponent decides to not, you know, mm. attack you, which is good. And yeah. also, great in UPF. That's true. That is also <laughs> true. Um, which is what, yeah. what we always have to think about. Yeah, th- <laughs> exactly. I, 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 I think two things. I think one. I think this is. I, I would guess like ninety nine percent. This is the token bow because based on power level alone. This is not. A, I. This is not a majestic level bow. Let me just put it that way. In fact, yeah, no. when I when I look at this, this is like a more expensive red liner that you can also turn things face up with. Like, like because you don't get any additional benefit other than arsenaling it, right? Like the arrow. Like you don't, I mean, you don't get plus it, one. The benefit, is, the benefit is you can do it on your opponent's turn. Yeah, but, but yeah. like but you're, not, you're not getting any extra card advantage like you do with the others. Well, well right. I'm comparing it with something, another token bow, like Shiver, right? Shiver is also yeah. an instant. You can also do it on your opponent's turn. But it also gives your arrow plus one and dominate, where this one does, like, no- nothing. Like, you, it just Yeah, you're relying on the... Yeah. Oh, it yeah. maybe does nothing. Or if you're an aim-focused dick, it, yeah. it puts an aim card, right? It which it, which is it. kind of important. It, it's an enabler, which is... For, for you know, once we see... Once, yeah... Once we see more aim aim counters, uh, well, aim related ticks, we'll know whether or not it's good. Uh, now, like, the for, interesting thing I, okay. I'd like to ask you as um, a, as our resident um, ranger player, are you going to feel like you're going to get to a point where in your ranger deck, whether it be Riptide, Azalea, Litsy, that you're actually going to start? Mm-hmm. Playing multiple bows in your deck for for different matchups, are we getting to, our, or do we not feel like the uh, there's enough difference between what the uh, bows do at the moment? I think there's a I think there's a massive difference between like you know for instance Death Dealer and Dreadbore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I I I take out Dreadbore against certain things. It has come back into the CC list recently just because of how. Amazing it is again in in the sort of mid to late game because you can still get plus one on your arrows and you're still evading their most high value defense reactions. So I think it I think it is good like in mid to late game for for certain matchups. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, th- th- this one isn't it, this one is not an Azalea weapon. I don't think. I think no. Death Dealer will still be the token bow for Azalea even well, in this one. I, I could but see we'll there see. being a situation where like if the aim counters are really good, then you pro- you might have an aim counter deck. But I think the better question is. Is would you run this over Sandscour Great Bow, which is probably like not right. Like I don't think you'd run this over Sandscour, which just puts aim counters on all of your arrows when they get put face up into your arsenal, like from sta- anywhere, like just static. Yeah, although yeah. it's just right from your deck. Yeah, from your deck. Uh, take, from from your deck. Yeah. On them. So like, yeah. but like for um, for example, uh, uh, Azalea's hero ability, right? When it puts it on from your deck, you get the dominate, and then you also get the aim counter. Like I don't, I don't yeah. see Azalea running Barb Castaway over Sandscour Great Bow. Like, yeah. I do really like yeah. the uh, for for thematic I- idea though. Is I I do really like the idea that you know Azalea as as effectively an assassin, even though she's not an assassin, but in law she kind of is has has a bunch of bows depending on who she's hunting, and and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and like she she picks 
the 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 particular bow for the for the prey that she is uh, she is after, which is which to me, I mean, I'm not talking about winning Pro Tour with her. I'm talking about the feeling of uh, if I was if I was hunting a if I was hunting a wizard, I'd have to I have to bring out this bow as as, as a really cool. You know, for, for yeah, the, the more, mage layer bow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bow. For, for, for for the more um, theme theme law orientated players among us, uh, I think mm-hmm. it's re- really cool that we are getting a bunch of different things because because this is what I find in a lot of other classes weapons where you just like ah, uh, it's much of a much as like a hammer is a hammer is a hammer and they're not <laughs> overly different. Um, they, yeah. You may change it out for one matchup, whereas I do like like the classes where the the weapons do do you know change change how you build the deck. Yeah, um, I think I think this is like I think with, with, with this as well, it's, it's, it's uh, good to note as well. If you go onto Flesh and Blood's website right now and you go to Living Legend mm, section, yeah, it gives you everybody's signature weapon, right? And this is Riptide signature weapon, okay. Barb's Castaway. Oh, I'm curious. Um, what? So, I didn't. I didn't look. That, what... that, oh, that, that that just means much like Azalea's signature weapon was death. Uh, death dealer, all right? Yeah. So, that's right. So, uh, if, so, so if, Rip, if Riptide Living Legends Barbed Castaway would go away with it, yeah. it would rotate. Yeah. Um. So it. Go, so what that says to me is this is going to synergize with Riptide in a certain way. So. Um, and this is Azalea... this is what you'll be getting in the Blitz deck as well. Probably. Yeah. 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 Um, oh well, no, you yeah. will be if it's a, if it's a specialization weapon. I will put money. This That's will true. be in the blitz stick. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, which begs the question as well. Uh, obviously, we, we, we're not speaking about this all aspects of it. Which also begs a question: like in Riptide's art, he's holding a harpoon in one hand and also a big anchor in the other. So, is that going to be his majestic, like quiver esque? Extra slot uh, yeah. or something like I, that. I don't know. Or, or <laughs> is the or is the anchor going to be part of a trap? Yeah, Maybe. that's 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 what like 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 I just want like I just want like like the hijab art from uh, the Ira Welcome Deck, uh, like in that cartoon style of just someone getting that anchor dropped on their head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that, that's my hope. <laughs> uh, uh, and now I am actually going. Trying to find the uh, the Living Legend page because I want to see what Usuri's I, like, I want to see what Usuri's uh, we- weapons are called. <clears throat> oh I, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure if they're on there actually. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think they are. We we already know who. I would imagine they knowing LFS, they won't be they won't be on there until they're until they're spoiled and like that that they only put Riptides on there because they spoiled it. Well, my, well, that's my that's case. not true because we're going to talk about something in just a second because we know what uh, the new Arachne's weapon is called. Yeah, you know what? Really? That. Yeah, it's oh, on okay. here. It's on well, here. Maybe I missed. It. Um, okay, maybe I missed that. Yeah, yeah. it's something what we're going to so, talk about today. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. In a, we'll go, go go into that in a moment. But yeah, just go. go uh, last thoughts on this on this bow. Um, Obviously, it's Iraq, uh, not Arachne, it's a Riptide's signature weapon, as dictated by the Living Legends thing on the on the website. So I think this sort of gives us an idea, gives us an idea as to what Riptide's ability might be. Um, and I think I think it's something to do with because obviously he's got lesser life as well. So what yeah. does lesser life mean? It means that you can deal damage in a space where no other hero can essentially, like Wizard can deal damage, Benji can deal damage because it's unblockable. What can this guy do? He can play traps on your opponent's turn that will essentially deal damage. I think it's going to be something to do with being able to... Because also in the trap article from Le- from Legend Story Studios, another thing we're going to be speaking about, so we'll speak about that in a bit, um, they say that the old traps from Crucible will stay the same. So the, the old traps yeah. that could only be played from Arsenal will <laughs> still be only, be only played from Arsenal. But in that same breath, in that same article, they also say that Based on the cards in this set, they think that the Crucible traps will actually be able to be played. We'll, so I think we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll yeah, see. The, the, but... the, 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 I've also heard. Uh, I've also heard James White say that potions were going to be good at some point. So yeah, I, I so thought, we'll, take, I like we'll, take, we'll take that with a grain of salt. We'll take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> but I think I, I, I think Rip, talk I, about I think, Luvia. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> 
But I think Riptide's ability will be something along the lines of you can reload a card into your arsenal instant speed hmm. on your opponent's turn. My so then you'll be able to. I, 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 I like the idea of the bow. Uh, I, I like where you're hitting, and I think it's going to be a lot to do with the idea being you place a trap at the end of your turn, play it, then reload your reload your arrow for your turn in your opponent's turn with with the bow. Hmm. My yeah. my yeah. guess is that you gain a bonus if you play a trap from Arsenal. Like, mm -hmm. like if you play a trap from Arsenal, then that trap gains like plus two defense or something like that. Uh, that that's my guess, and that and that's why how, that's how why now? that's why I think he has less life because like if if you're gaining like extra defense on all of your traps, then that balances out the loss of life, right? No. Oh, how about? How about if you if you play a trap uh, on if you play a trap from your arsenal, uh, use your bow's ability for free this good. turn. Good, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I feel this is just a general feeling, and also just the way the character looks. And now that we saw like one of his cards, we'll talk about that too. Um, it feels like he's a more he's a different take on Ranger, a different play style. He feels like he is like. Oh, the, the defensive, yeah, the defensive ranger, and I feel like I'm just, I'm just spitballing. I'm like, it, it makes sense to me if he's a defensive ranger that his hero ability is also defensive. So if he's going to be like Oldham esque, you know, that he wants to block a lot more, or it encourages you to to be defensive and block. Um, yeah, that that's. I think it'll be a bit of both. Yeah, he might. Yeah, he might so he might, I might have two abilities too. Like so, like he could have some ability that's like, like as said, like oh, during your turn you can. Uh, or during your opponent's turn, you can arsenal a trap or or something like for free, and then and then it's like if you play a trap from arsenal, then it gets a bonus because like they have to make the other traps not suck because they suck so bad. I, I, they suck so. I just bad. thought of something. I've just thought of something. Imagine if they made Riptide's ability similar to Azalea's ability, but with traps. Oh no! So, oh no! So it's like 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 on your opponent's turn. Uh, place you know replace a card in your arsenal with the top card of your deck if it's a trap you can play it this turn for free um, or oh, no, put it on the bottom you use use the bottom card instead so you can actually pitch something like pitch a trap to the yeah, bottom and then or, use or that something like that that's cool. that could be cool <laughs> that could be yeah. cool that's really cool design space um LSS. LSS, I, you're, you're listening to this i i think about a, wh a while ago i i predicted or i suspected that that was Necromancer's mechanic, where they 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 do stuff from the bottom of the deck, like yeah, like they, they play stuff. But anyway, like I think that's cool design space. I, I've I've told you about Necromancer, right? How no. it's the, how it how it, it it's got to be being a bit of a meme of like for the like for the first X sets every. Every time we put anything out, it was like, oh, 100% Necromancer that, you know, 100% Necromancer confirmed this set um, to a point where I'm not even sure they'll ever make a Necromancer. I just, I, or, or, or if they do, it'll be like 20 year anniversary and it'll be like the Pro Tour card, like Yark or something. Like oh, that. brilliant. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just such a meme. It's such a meme. It's such a meme. It's going to be. That no matter. No matter Anything with like purple hue, they're like, oh, necromancer, one hundred percent confirmed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting my chips down here, and, and I'm gonna I'm put my chips down in one spot. This is my one necromancer thing. Uh, Savage lands. My ne my necromancer thing is Savage lands, and it's gonna be uh like brute uh the the whatever the tribe <laughs> the, the necromancer. The, no, 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 no. Like whatever, I'm... whatever. Like lore wise, whatever the the the, the right. people of the the brutes. Uh, because we've seen like reincarnation as like you know yeah. brute card and, and like we've seen like the the skull motif on like the shamanistic gear and stuff. So that's my one thing. That's if I'm gonna put Nick. To be fair, yeah, I would love like a witch doctor. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Esque brute character, like something like that, would be cool. Yeah, absolute jungle shaman. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, that 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 is my. Uh, necromancer prediction i don't think it, i they could do like the traditional like you know pale white dude necromancer but i think it'd be cool to do like the the the, the brute necromancer you know kind of thing which yeah. doc, doctor thing that'd be cool mm. um, anyway uh so so we were speaking about riptide's ability and went into necromancers and witch doctors fantastic it's, it's speculation <laughs> just pure, pure speculation, speculation. <laughs> yeah. oh. 
brilliant. Um, well, I mean, but, we're gonna um, we're gonna know. Unlike Necromancer, we are going to know Riptide's ability in like two weeks. So, yeah. like, we'll we'll know. Yeah. yeah, we will know very very soon. Um, but um, but yeah, in the, in the same sort of breath as well. Obviously, the traps were, were released recently. Uh, there was a new trap for um, Riptide, yeah. which is a, a legendary specialization. Um, so that's interesting uh, space as well. Great, so great, great for Shiana. I mean, absolutely great for Shiana. It, Trap Shiana incoming. That is yep. not wrong because the card is like an absolute banger. Here we go. Yeah. I pull yeah. it up. Like I, I, I think this card is like insanely good. It's it's super mm-hmm. super good. It's, do you want to read it out then? Yeah, yeah, go yeah, for yeah. It. Um, so I'm gonna just look in on my on OBS here. Uh, so it's called Collapsing yeah. Trap. It is a Ranger Defense Reaction Trap. And so we kind of alluded to this before, but traps no longer have. In like the uh, a mechanic attached to the keyword trap. Now you can play traps uh, from a, like a, like a normal defense reaction. You can play from hand. You can play from arsenal. Um, yeah. Whereas the the old traps have now been like sort of errated to be functionally the same. That you can only play them from arsenal. New traps can be played from hand. So they more or less fixed them, which is which is really good because traps before yeah. sucked. Uh, this one in particular. Oh, also, before you go too too far, if you want. A copy of the new of the errata traps they will be released in the upcoming uh uh armory kits for the for the stores to to give out so you'll be able to get errated versions of of those original yep. traps from yep. your from your local store yeah no. make sure you do as well uh, op mm. oh, op uh <laughs> uh organized poo oh yeah exactly <laughs> i was just trying to think of like oh, oh, overtly poo there you go uh, poo, yeah. But uh, for the I've audio, for the audio listeners, I'm showing the visual uh, depictions of the cards here. You can see that they're they're functionally the same as the Crucible of War versions. They've just taken away the italicized reminder text and made it actual rules text that they have to be played from Arsenal for for all three of them. And as you can see, they are they yeah. are promo versions as well. Um, very interested to see. Probably not, but someone proposed like, oh, maybe they'll put them in. Um, the starter decks, like like the 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 Riptide starter deck. If they're doing promos, I would guess not, but maybe, like maybe they maybe they're may- they're, they're all rares though, right? Yeah, they're well. Like, I, yeah. I, I would hope I, I would hope the rare slots in the in the, uh, in the sticks went for, for slightly better cards. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, so keep in mind, this is a new trap. You can play it from your hand. Um, it's a legendary. Riptide specialization, so you can only have one of them in your deck, um, and only if you're playing Riptide or, I guess, Shiana. Uh, it's a majestic rarity, though. So it's not a legendary rarity, right? So this will be pretty easy to pull. Um, yeah. So when this defends an attack with Go Again, the attacking hero discards their hand, then draws that card, that many cards minus one. Um, this is, like, this is so good, not just because... Of the like the the effect the effect obviously is really good, but the fact that it doesn't matter if it like it all all it cares about is defending it right like it doesn't have to block it all out it doesn't have to have any of these stipulations all you do is you just play this against an attack that has go again it doesn't even matter how the attack had go again it doesn't matter if it's a weapon with go again all it matters is that it's an attack with go again and then you get the effect which I think is like yep I think it's one of the best that, parts one of the best parts about it. That means- that being said, um, it's it's very it, like it's a great card. Don't get me wrong; I think it's very good. Um, but I feel like when you play it, there are going to be there are going to be those stories where you're like, "Oh, I'm playing against Briar, and I played this, and then they drew up, and they got a better hand, and they just kept going with their challenge." That, that's yeah. true. I mean, like you always risk; you always have that risk when you're yeah. doing something like this. But they do draw one yeah. less card. So this this is essentially yeah. not only forcing them to like. If you're talking about pure card advantage, this makes your opponent discard a card, right? Like, uh, the, the, yeah. the base level, your opponent discards a card. But they also replace their hand. So the, re- yeah. the hand replacement effect could be good or could be bad, right? Like, it's just, it just all mm-hmm. depends on what, what's going on. Like, it's just all luck, unless they're doing some opt shenanigans. Um, mm. But at the base level, you, they, still have to, they still have one less card. So, like, it, it can turn into, like, a really awkward thing where you do this... Um, and then they draw into a hand where they can't play anything. Like, say, say they had two, a two-card hand, right? And they wanted to pitch a card to play a card. 
they have to draw one card, and if it has any cost, they can't play it at all. Like it can do certain situations yeah. like that where it's just yeah. the like almost like a blowout. It's it makes it, sense it, why it, it's a it, legendary card. Like yeah, yeah. It's 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 funny though for me um, being a brute man. I saw this and I'm like, well, <laughs> all day, all day. I want rangers to play this card against me. Well, yeah. I'm like, attack first. Discard my hand, intimidate the rest of your hand. Maybe I discard a beast within. Maybe I discard a skull crack. Get, get an yeah. So, so <laughs> again, it's Reinar, not a card yeah. that you're going to be uh, you're going to be wanting to play against every hero, but definitely your against your fives and against your 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 briars and stuff like that. And um, you know, even even things like you know, Lexis like go wide Lexis and stuff like that. It can de- definitely be very heartbreaking for them. But again, as I said. Very good card, but there are definitely going to be some matchups where this is just going to be a blue pitch or is sideboarded yeah. out. Well, which, I mean, like, which is fine. It's going to be a blue mm-hmm. pitch, or like you block, you know, something that doesn't have go again, right? Yeah. Like you, yeah. you block a yeah. command and conquer or, or whatever, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, or you mm-hmm. can't, you can't block command and conquer. Well, that's true. That is true because it's, it's a reaction. <laughs> but okay, uh, Easter egg. Because it's, it's, it's a reaction, yeah. 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 But um, it, it, it's. It is interesting though that it is you can play it from your hand, uh, which uh, um, and again, this is what I've been saying for years. Uh, Kel knows this is that my my fix for traps was always they should be you should be able to play them from hand and then maybe get the advantage from playing them from your arsenal. Whereas this yeah. this is not quite that, but um, I think I think we're hitting. I wouldn't be surprised if you see something like that in like slightly lower. Uh, slightly lower um, rarity cards where it'll be a defense reaction, but if it's played from the arsenal, it will get um, get it, get the trap effect and stuff like that, which I, I, which also, is like that, which I think yeah, is a great way also, to, um, to work. That's also part of the article as well. It says that you know the the trap is now basically just a subtype, like mm-hmm. a creature right. is in in, in magic, or an you arrow. know, your creature yeah. artifact or whatever. Um, yeah. So. Or arrows. so yeah, or an arrow. So I think so. I think Riptide's ability could also have something to do with the keyword trap on it. So yeah. if you if you've done a tra- if you've done a trap thing, do this. Um, I, so uh, I, that I, also makes sense. I agree with that. I, I suspect we'll also see some sort of equipment that cares about it, either another quiver, like a trap based quiver, or like a, uh, a, a, a arm piece or something like that. That it's like, oh, the first trap you play each turn gets plus one defense, or like. So, you know, something like that. Like, it cares only about, like, traps. Um, How about, because yeah. they were saying the old traps, they 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 think are going to be good. What if Riptide has something like, um, you can play, you don't have to pay, you don't have to play traps from your arsenal. So he can play the yeah. other traps from his hand as well. I, yeah. See, that would be kind <laughs> of a wasted ability because it only would apply no, 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 no. to the no, old, not, old not, not, as, not, a, not as his only ability, but like as a second, you know, how yeah, some yeah. heroes have, you know, two abilities. Like, like it, it, it's an ability to do with traps and then also a bonus to make those traps a bit better. I. Yeah. Well, that's why that's, that's why I was on the that's why I was on the 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 the, the thought train of the reload because reload essentially mm-hmm. allows you even even on your opponent's turn reload allows you to put something into your arsenal so if you had a trap in hand that can't normally block you can mm-hmm. still reload it in there with with riptide's speculative ability to then yeah. still play still get a bonus if R- riptide has it if you play a trap you deal damage because i think where i was going with the extra life damage thing is is you know riptide starts on lesser life so normally that dictates that there is some form of damage somewhere which there isn't normally, uh, and traps do that. You know, pitfall trap especially does yeah. the damage if unless you pay one. So I think yeah. um, stuff like this, like collapsing trap, are you te- are you telling me that collapsing trap will not deal you any damage when you're falling off a bloody bridge? Let's mm. be honest. Mm. Um, I think there's going to be traps that deal damage or some something like that. Hence why the yeah. lesser life, and it also or, goes or, into or, the sorry. Or like- or like the the pay two or discard a ca- you know that that sort of thing like not necessarily directly dealing you damage but yeah. making you have to make a decision about about um either paying or discarding or something yeah yeah so we will see obviously it's going to come out very very soon but yeah cool nonetheless I, I also yeah. am very interested um to see whether or not tra- um, any of the traps are going to have 
large amount of defense. Well, like that, that's... At, at the moment, it, it, everything has been about the same as as a regular. Like, mm. like the difference between this legendary and just blocking with an arrow is exactly the same. Well, see, that's why. I, that's why I was suspecting that his ability would pump. Uh, pump traps played from Arsenal because that would incentivize you to play the old crappy traps, um, yeah. and then also tie into his like defensive theming, and then also make the traps that are blocking like this that blocks for three block for four or five or whatever to make it actually get those right. break points that normal things are. So mm -hmm. that's why I I suspected that, but who knows? We'll we'll see. We'll see soon what what uh, direction they take it. I'm also re really interested to see if they'll do a similar a similar card like take aim. Um, but but call it something like set the trap where it allows exactly, you yeah. like it's an instant an, an instant instead of an action that allows you to put a card face down in your arsenal um which cool. but but put it a card face down in your arsenal so you could if you chose to put an arrow down or you could put a trap and you just be like is it a trap? Oh, see, is it a, see, I was, is it an error? Uh, I was thinking more like a like a buff, like taking. So it'd be like put put a trap into your arsenal. That trap gets plus four defense this turn or something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, see, see, with something like that though, you're foretelling that a hundred percent this well, is a trap. Whereas I really like the idea of set the trap where it is part partly a bluffing game. You know, buffing game where you're like, did I set a trap? Are you on well, two life? So, is this going to kill you, or the, am I just am I just going to bluff you into the way so I can have my arrow to shoot you next turn? If they call your bluff and it's a trap, and then you're just stuck with a trap in your arsenal, and then you're sad because you can't shoot any arrows off because you're riptide, and, or like in limited yeah. and, and don't have new horizon. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but that's you know that's part of the that's part of the bluff, right? I, I, I'm going to say like right now for people listening in limited like. Be careful with putting not arrows into your arsenal as a ranger. Um, if you get stuck, yeah. if you get stuck with a defense reaction in there, and your opponent just like doesn't do anything, oh, yeah. you're gonna be really sad. So uh, on, on the upside, is at least this is an all melee. This is an all melee set. So yeah. the only way your opponent's gonna kill you is attacking you. So at some point, you should be able to get it out of there. But still, yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, collapsing trap. I think it's a really, really good card. Um, and how great is that artwork? Amazing, yeah. It's really that, sweet. That would, that would be a sweet play, Matt. So uh, I, I, I would pay 3,000 3, uh, prize, prize war points for that, <laughs> uh, for that play, Matt. Uh, the art, <laughs> I, I saw some people thinking it's metrics. It's totally not metrics. It's totally the pitch. Oh, no. You look in the totally back. Yeah, you look in the background. You can see it's subterranean. And also, <laughs> I, I, I looked really close at the, the building. It, it looks very spidery to me. I'm just saying, it looks very cobwebby. Like you look at the building, and it looks like it's got like spider cobwebs and stuff on it. So I'm wondering if like they're blowing up like the spider headquarters or something. Like I don't know. Well, it's it's more their own headquarters, right? It's like well, that. Maybe they, it's you, like you, a... you're trying to you're trying to someone's trying to advance with their own headquarters. Boom. Or maybe it's like a death. rebellion kind of thing. Who knows? Like maybe they're like, you know. I, I am super excited for for the law oh, for me outsiders. Too. Like, like just, to be honest, to be honest, um, like I'm not a ninja fan. Ninjas don't interest me to play. Uh, rangers, I, I have been known to play rangers, but I am really looking forward to the story, the 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 lore articles to come out for this set because this is a this is honestly next to the savage lands the pits is my, is my favorite um my favorite uh area of um of race and so i'm i'm looking forward to to more more lore me and as too i don't want to speak for as but um pits is you my favorite you, you know me, you know me well enough you can speak yeah. to me if you like yeah yeah pits is, <laughs> pits is our favorite area right like um yeah, absolutely like and after seeing like that we have new assassin like usuri is like kind of like the the head figure of the set, I think it's the most excited I've ever been for like a new character. I'm like, give me, give me the good assassin stuff. Like, I want to see it. I want to. I'm, I'm so excited for it. So, obviously. just the fact as well. Like, um, yeah, obviously, assassin's going to be a major part of it. Azuri's going to be. It's going to be cool oh. to see what, what, uh, what they do. But 
obviously they originated from Mysteria because of the yeah. border, right? So yeah. that whole story arc is going to oh, be interesting yeah. to see why cool. why the ninjas are there in the first place. Yeah, so, and, I, and I do like the Mysteria we didn't and, expect and the ninja it. stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to mention one more thing before we move on is that there was yeah. kind of a throwaway thing in the article, but I and I, I, I kind of like pointed it out in the, my video where I talked about uh, the new traps at the beginning of the article. They mention that playing the, playing the traps from Arsenal didn't really sit well with all of the assassin ranger traps um, that were that were in the set. So mm. like they heavily implied that there's going to be assassin ranger hybrid traps. Um, Ooh, so yeah. uh, we're we're probably going to be getting some assassin ranger hybrid traps, and I'm very excited for that. Um, I, I've been kind of going on to the, this mid-range strategy with, with Arachne, and I'm not sure how Usury or the new Arachne are going to play, but um, mm -hmm. having some traps that can be played from hand... So basically what I'm saying is, like, giving me a good replacement for something like Sink Below and Oasis Respite, I'm all, I'm all here for it. So if, I, if you're giving me some good traps, like some hybrid assassin traps, that I can replace my Sink Belows with something different, I, I want that. Give me. Give me, give me, give me something different. I want some other options, and uh, I'm I'm really excited for it. Um, Maybe that is the answer to the um, to the mid range question that we was posing on the last tangent podcast. Yeah. Was summit like so, summit like this where you can still block effectively and maybe deal damage or maybe hemorrhage some cards because they discard cards or whatever. So maybe it's like uh, like their way of doing like the mid range thing where you're blocking essentially, but also doing something else with the trap card that you're using. Yeah. And um, so. Yeah, I like like mentioned last week. I think the blood rat pox will help with that too, right? Getting like some sort oh, of like. It's gotta be a blood. Yeah, it's gotta be a blood trap, surely. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, oh yeah, it is. It's gonna be a pit of spikes, right? It's like, oh yeah. yeah, pit of yeah, pit of tetanus or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's all of the it's all of the bows that look like they're gonna give you tetanus. So it's it's the new one, yeah. like the the new castaway, yeah. and it's got like dreadboard down there too. It's just all the bows are pointed. Oh up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, just a pit so of good. bows. Absolutely. Yeah. Like just, just look at the art on cast uh, on Barb Castaway. It's like it literally has like blood coming off of it, man. It's got all these like sharp yeah, edges cool. with like blood coming off of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all good. It's good. Um but um but yeah, yeah, we uh we definitely touched on uh, on Riptide, we definitely touched on the armory kits and the new bow and the traps and all that sort of stuff. So um another thing that we touched on as well was Living Legend Page and the fact that um the uh Riptide's weapon was the barbed castaway, but Arachne, the new Arachne, solitary confinement, is confirmed to be have uh to be having a signature weapon as well, which doesn't exist yet. Well, yeah. it exists, but obviously we haven't seen it. And um, do you, have you got it in front of you, Cal? I, can't, I haven't got what it's called. So, yeah, I remember what oh, it's yeah. called. Uh, I do want to mention real quick, just in case people are curious. I did check. Yuzuri is on the list, but her weapon slot is blank. Um, I don't know if, that's, yeah. it's, if it's blank because they don't want to reveal it yet, or if it's blank like some of the other heroes that just don't have one, like Yoji or whatever. We'll see. We'll see, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see what they do with that. Um, but yeah, it's called like... Um, an orbito class. Here, let me let me pull up exactly how what what it's uh, called. Um, no, that's yeah. right. Yeah, orbit or orbito class or, or something. Orbito yeah. class. And so what it is, it's okay. Let me let me paint. <laughs> okay, it's a it's a thin, it's a thin metal spike, and then a little tiny hammer. So it's like a ham hammer and a spike, and it's used for lobotomies where they stick it up your <laughs> nose. And then they chisel, oh. like slightly chisel at your brain. Um, ki kind of imagine, I don't think it's the same thing, but it reminds me of the tools that uh, embalmers would use for mummification, where they stick the thing up the nose mm -hmm. and they swivel around and pull out pull yeah. the brain. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, a very, it's a very assassin weapon, right? It's, mm. it's, it's brutal. Like, it's so metal. Um, it's yeah. also very interesting because... If that is the case, if that's what it is, it's going to be a two-handed weapon. Could, could be. It'll, yeah. ha it'll have to be because you have to have you have to have the spike and the hammer, right? Yeah. So, that's so true. it'll have to be a two-handed weapon. Yeah, because like yeah. on the on the page, it doesn't list them as two separate weapons. It doesn't rep it doesn't say like you know orbito class and hammer. It's like the 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 thing. Yeah. So yeah, it probably is. A, it probably is a two-hander. Um, it. 
I would imagine it's another one of those weapons that like only attacks for one or something, but has a nasty on hit effect. That that would be my do guess you, I, based on it, yeah. Do you know what do, do you know what I think it's going to be? What? There's um so I, I'm not going to take credit for this. I'm going to take the people that are in Discord for this. Um but what some people are saying that what what does lobotomy do? It makes you forget, doesn't it? it makes you forget things. Um uh, I think that's what lobotomy does. It makes you forget stuff. I yeah. I've watched a film well, called, called Suck, Sucker Punch and they do that. They lobotomize someone so they lose yeah. all their memories or something. Uh, it's 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 mm. uh, not exactly. But yeah, yeah. Like that's that could that could be one of the effects. Um lobotomy is or like you just go brain dead. <laughs> well, it, what a lobotomy is is they take like a little piece of your brain out. Um yeah. and depending on what piece they take out it'll, it might have different effects, right? It could mm-hmm. um cause someone to be less aggressive. It could also cause pe- mm. someone to forget certain parts or like th- your brain is complicated and there's a lot of different things that happen depending on what part of the brain it is. Um, nice. So, I, so but with, yeah, yeah. with regards to that, with regards to that, I think it, it, if you attack with this and it hits, you're probably going to take an intellect damage. I mean, that would, that would be pretty for, rough. For a turn. Yeah. That would be pretty rough. Well, yeah. Just for a turn. Just for a turn. But yeah, but yeah, if, if if it attacks for one, right? If let's say it costs three, you have to pitch a blue for it. But you attack for one damage. If it hits, they get minus one intellect until end of turn. I, it's, it it still would be that's, pretty good. That's nice because like it's just like block me. Like it, that's what it says. That's what it's any, anytime <laughs> it, a card has a nasty effect like that, it just says you have to block me. Like yeah, that yeah so, exactly. If it, if that's the case, I would probably be using this in my current Arachne build because, um, God damn you! Because this the card basically reads, "I'm taking a card from you, no matter what." And in in exactly. mid in yeah, these kind of like right. mid range decks is like that's the perfect thing. Like I'm taking a card from you, no matter what. And then if it has go again, here here we go. That plus like surgical extraction is like, I, I'm eating your whole hand. Like you're you're gonna you're you're gonna be discarding something. Um, I just had a thought. Cool. This, this, this is absolutely not what they'd do, but how cool would it be is if instead of taking a card out, they're like, um, you know, if this hits, uh, randomly replace one card in your opponent's hand with a crack bauble, like they've just forgotten what they <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was pretty yeah. good. If it, it, yeah. Honestly, if this was like a digital card game, I could see like that actually being a thing. Like if it was like a Hearthstone oh, or something. That, yeah, that could be. Yeah, that could be quite a cool little space. You know, if it hits, you just randomly banish a card and then you take a token and put that into your deck instead. So essentially yeah. it just it makes you forget one thing and then replace it with like a like you say, like a bauble or something that can only be pitched. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's a great idea. Definitely a digital thing though, as you said, Kel, because there's a lot of bookkeeping. But that's yeah. a cool Yeah, thing yeah. It's, it's really fiddly in real life, but um Yeah. 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 I think it's cool. Uh so yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this this weapon. Um, I so the weapons in general. We're talking about the, the, the Orbita class as well as the Barbed Castaway. I proposed about a week or so ago, maybe longer than that, on Living Legends that we might have multiple weapons per per class at at the token rarity for each hero because we have six heroes. I think that still could be a thing. Like, but but after seeing. Riptide's weapon, like the barbed castaway, it might just be one. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's two, but it might just be one per class, right? So we'll have one token ranger weapon, one token assassin weapon, one token um, ninja weapon. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting point. So if that if that was to be the case, are you are you thinking we wouldn't get a reprint of Death Dealer? Well, Instead, we'd well get, we, uh, we we could get a reprint. So that that would be the token bow. Like we would get a reprint of Death Dealer. Yeah, but, but you but before you were considering that the bow that we just saw was probably the token bow. I think I'm pretty sure that one is the token bow. Um, right, right. So like I'm saying, like if we get Death Dealer, that means we'd we'd get it in addition to the the token bow or or, or Barb Castaway. Right. And I because I was thinking about this because like I was thinking about like Riptide and Azalea being like Azalea more arrow focused, and we were assuming that Riptide is going to be a lot of like trap focused. Seeing the bow, I could see Azalea easily use that bow unlimited, right? Like, I don't see why not. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, like, does yeah. she even need another one? So, I don't know. And I was also thinking about it in terms of, like, the ninjas, too, because we have Benji and Katsu. And I was like, are they just going to reprint Kadachis? Kadachis are quite good. Maybe they do an, Maybe they do some new daggers. Um, 
And this Orbito class thing could be like the token, I was say, token or, or, assassin. Or, or more depressing, instead of Kadachis, they just give us Edge of Autumn again. I mean, yeah. Edge, Edge of Autumn would be <laughs> kind of funny. Like, yeah. Or, or, or the needles. And so, like, they just break against uh, oh, yeah. traps. But I'm very curious to see, especially the ninja ones. Uh, I'm curious to see where they go with, with the weapons, right? Because to this day, yeah. we've only had a couple ninja weapons. We've had the Edge of Autumn, Kodachi's, and then Fi's weapon. And then, and then the needles. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. We, we will find out. But yeah. I've, al- I've always hoped, um, because we've seen, seen those style of weapons on cards, but like, like something like, I, I'm not sure, I'm not a weapons expert, but, um, you know, the, the dagger on the on the chain weapon that's like in like a kunai um, it's kunai with chain yeah 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 something like that would be a really cool weapon a weapon yes. for a, for yeah. a character or something like that. yeah um, and a really in- and a really interesting two handed weapon as well that like had something like if this hits it gets go again whereas if it doesn't it like like with that the whole idea of it hitting and then you recoiling it um. But if it if it miss, misses, you're you're like left open, so you don't get to attack again or something. Would to give it a different sort of mechanic, which would be kind of cool. I'm still mm. really hoping, like as mentioned earlier, that Riptide has like a an anchor, like a like that, like his whole like harpoon and anchor <laughs> thing, and then like he like maybe like a, like maybe some majestic or something, and he has like an alternate build where he doesn't use arrows at all. It's just a harpoon and anchor, and then traps and whatever his yeah. you know, hero ability is, and then he can like he can like harpoon people. Oh. I got my hopes up for I got my hopes up for some cool stuff. <laughs> the art, man, the freaking art. He's holding that as the weapon, and then he's got the he's got the bow on his back. And even on like oh, the younger one, he he's holding the bow. He's on the younger one, he's holding the bow. Mm-hmm. But his like his main art, he's not even holding a bow. He's holding the the anchor thing. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I, oh, have, I've never, I, I have I never noticed that before. I never noticed that on the Riptide Young Art that he is actually holding just a normal bow, isn't he? Yeah, it's just a regular yeah. bow. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas isn't... on the look of the deep, it's actually got the 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 uh, castaway one, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's really that that brings me to an interesting point, which they've never done before, but is possibly a thing that could happen in the future, and it may it may happen in Outsiders. We don't know because we haven't seen it yet. But it, do you think? Design space wise, there is a um, the possibility of making a character that their young hero is built one way, and then their adult hero has a slightly different ability. Um, so you build, like, so you mm. build the blitz deck different to the um, the CC deck. And I feel like Riptide, like, I feel like the two that I can think of that make sense for because of just the artwork and stuff. Would be Leviah because you're like you have young girl Leviah, then you have big beast um, Leviah, yeah. um, or Riptide where you have sort of young, less diseased uh, Riptide and yeah. then older, older, um, more, more infirmed. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, more, well, more. I mean, you know, I mean, come on, he he looks like a bloater from Left 4 Dead. He looks like if you shoot him, yeah, he's gonna yeah, explode yeah, yeah. and then cover you yeah. in goo and then all the other zombies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he, yeah. so hence like. He's a little bit more attacky as a young hero, and then as an older hero, it's more about traps and stuff like that. Um, because mm. you can feed that into the lore of, you know, as he's got more and more diseased and stuff, he's had to, you know, mm. rethink how how he uh, survives in the world of of the pits and stuff, which would be it, a it cool. Thing. Yeah. It feels to me that that design space they've they've kind of like sequestered it for like the alternate named heroes so for example like we have arachne and then we have arachne solitary Direct, confi- yeah. solitary confinement yeah. yeah so i think that i think Direct, they're doing um, i think they're doing that with with that kind of stuff um mm. i would i would like to see, I, think, I would like to see that for the cc as well because we've, we've seen that mostly yeah. for like young heroes right. yeah. yeah so i think they could uh, do it again I, and i think that is a really interesting thing as we get into year five year ten yeah. Instead of like always just bringing the new new people, I mean, and I guess the the key example that we actually have of it before is Bravo Showstopper and Bravo Star of the Show, um, yeah. Yeah. which is the same character at a different point in their yeah. story arc. And and you know, as we get into you know, 
as we get into ideas of you know stuff outside of the card game whether it be graphic novels or an animated series or something like that to actually see the characters evolve and get new and again this is how possibly you get around the living legend thing because because this is the thing we don't we won't know until later this year on whether or not uh chain prism whether or not their living legends are going to be replaced with new characters that are that class or mm, yeah. new versions and 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 that's a really interesting point for me because because again i can see them going either way because you're like um one way is that with a new character you get a new play style that you, you you're not just having to go all right well let's make a slightly different version of the same character but at the same time if they go you know this is prism from post the i don't know the 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 storming of the uh the library or something some mm. you know tragic thing in her history and now she's more about you know straight attacks and not illusions or, or whatever you can change the play style but it also means that you get back prism specializations you get back chain specializations because this is one of the things that people are like oh well we're going to get them back but we're not going to get to use these cards again so it'd be very interesting to see mm. and i guess yeah, this year all those, will all be those the cards first are wasted, they? all those yeah. cards are wasted at the moment that's a problem like all the yeah, shadow yeah, yeah. Uh, well, not all of them because well, the you can always play them in upf that's true exactly yeah <laughs> But yeah, yeah like so that 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 that's a really interesting design space. I um, would that, that we'll get the answer for later this year, obviously. I would bet yep. new versions. That that would be my bet is that we get new versions of them. Because I mean, like, it makes sense business wise because it makes sense like to 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 throw a bone to your fans of these characters to like still have them playable, right? Because it's mm. like. You know, it keeps the people who are interested in those characters like playing the game. Um, yeah. Like the Prism Diehards, because there's a lot of Prism Diehards. And then mm. also, like you said, uh, the specializations, it makes those cards like playable. Mm. So you don't have useless legendaries like Doomsday or something like that, you know? Or not Doomsday, but yeah. Eclipse. Um, yeah. So I, I think, I think, I think we, we see not, not like, I think we see new takes on the characters, right? The yeah. same character, they have the name, like Chain, but it's like Chain, you know shadows harbinger or something and he's got like a whole yeah. new effect, whole new effect like a brand new effect mm. like maybe you build him differently but he's still chained so you can still use the the chain stuff same with prism right whole new effect but you can still use like her you know arc light sentinel <laughs> if you want yay um so yeah uh and, and i take that back. back i want completely new <laughs> i want completely new characters so i don't have to play against arc like sentinel i mean our arc oh, like sentinel is miserable as an aggro player myself that's a miserable card um it's horrible what um oh i was gonna say i i think i don't know if this is gonna happen but i think it would be cool i think a, a perfect way to reintroduce this and i know a lot of people keep thinking they're gonna do multiple different ways, but I think a really smart way to do this would be to put it in a classic battle set, like especially like Prism and Chain. You can have classic battles, Prism versus Chain, with the new versions of the characters, right? So this is a way that you have the new versions without having to have, like, to shoehorn them into a set that doesn't care about Shadow or Light or whatever. And then you can even, like, print that, car cards for Shadow be, or Light in that. Like, yeah, that being said, yeah. as a Leviah player, I hope we get a a new set that deals with shadow and light again soon, as as I would imagine the Bolton players would also feel the same way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they even, do with it. Even, they... even, if, even if it was like a supplementary scene or something, I just but go, Levia needs something. We'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, hey, I, I play Arachne, which is also in, in the same tier as Levia, so I know, I feel it. Hopefully, I'm getting something good in this mm. in, in Outsiders, but um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I, I, I suspect the, the, the talented stuff is, is more for like a supplemental set. I would not be surprised if we get a if we get a supplemental set that's just focused entirely on talents. Like, you know, you'll have all of them like Elemental and Draconic and um we and go back to like Shadow and Light. We go back to like an Everfest type artwork and it's just like a uh, talent show of Wraith. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like like Wraith X Factor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wraith. Uh, Wraith. Uh, Wraith's got a talent. Young, a young Simon Cowell, a merchant, 
class. Oh, <laughs> sure, oh no. Oh, no. Judge's, yeah. judges other heroes. His chest piece is non-existent. It's just chest hair, like a little shirt, the unbuttoned shirt. <laughs> I, his hand piece is just a buzzer. Just a buzzer, yeah. Brilliant. I, I, I think there's a non-zero so no chance that the supplemental set this year is, like a, is like a talented one. No, I mean, we already have a Rudy hero, so, you know, who knows? Exactly, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right, what's next, on, what's next on the build? Um, just uh just um the op announcement so uh Ooh, there was a there was a load of uh, load of cool things coming up um for um especially for europeans um mm. i might add um so the, the the biggest thing was that worlds this year will be in europe we don't yes. know where it's going to be it will be um, announced at the pro tour though is yes. pro tour baltimore nice yeah okay yeah. good um so yeah and we'll i think that's a, i think that's a really good place to announce it as well like um because uh, I, I believe they said what well, it's going to be fourth quarter um, is the yeah. one thing that they said, and, yeah. and so I feel like Q4. Yeah. That's that is a good amount of time. I, I know I know that LSS has definitely been you know they've listened to the player base. They're like we need more time to book accommodation and time off and stuff like that. So they really do want to um, you know they're trying hard to get out in front of that as much as they can. But again, people just have to realize that it's trying to set up multiple high level events in multiple different countries with multiple different event partners it it, it does just take time it's uh, you know all yeah. these people are like oh they should you know just announce the whole calendar on january 1st it's like you just you know it's just logistically not not possible and i think they've done i mean don't get me wrong they can definitely be better at it um but i feel like they are, i think this year is better than last year, and hopefully, as long as we keep going like that, is that each time it's going to get better and better. Because, um, right. yeah, um, there, but yeah, just logistically, you know, being a company that is based in New Zealand, trying to set up with, multi, you know, you've got <laughs> time zone differences, you've got, you know, you know, different, you know, different seasons and different countries and stuff like that, and so. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of logistics that goes into, into <laughs> organizing this stuff. So, so kudos to them to getting as much out as they have. You can you can tell that they're a company from New Zealand with some of the choices in the U.S. Because um, anyone like is who lives in the U.S. is like, why the hell would they put a calling there? <laughs> like, um, yeah, like my my the favorite one is is New Jersey. I was just like, why the hell would they put an event in New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey's like, I, I, like there's like three states that people make fun of the most. There's Ohio for just, it's just Ohio. There's nothing. It, it's yeah. the most. It, I think it's like voted as the most depressing state. Um, there's Florida, which is just insane. Which we had big big events in Florida, and then and then New Jersey, which is kind of like the butt of a lot of other jokes. So like, especially people who live in New York. So it's just like, like New Jersey and and like Florida or like. A lot of people make fun of those states, like from from other states. Um, so it is really funny to me it's that we had Florida. Oh. Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, there's a whole yeah. Twitter, there's a whole Twitter Florida account man. called Florida Man. It's just yeah. insane stuff happens in Florida. Like Florida is just, I I can't explain well, that, it more that, than just like that's the thing, right? It's like like Florida Man, and then the other thing about Florida is it's weird. Just old people go to die. It's like Florida. Right. And, there's, there's like two. There's, there's Florida and Arizona. Like, if you want right. to be in the tropical kind of thing, you go to Florida. If you want to go to the arid area, you go to Arizona. That's the two where the old people go to, to, to die. <laughs> Me, I'll, I'll go to the great white north. I'll go up into Alaska and I'll just kind of, you know, drift yeah. away or get eaten by a bear or something. <laughs> oh, really? I, I totally see you going to Alaska and it's like a whole northern exposure thing, but with a podcast instead of local radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, I can't, uh, for me personally, I can't stand like heat. I, I hate it. Um, I'd rather be cold than, than hot easily, especially since I could just put more clothes on or something. Um, and this is some coming from someone I used to work, uh, in a place where I had, I'd have to go into a freezer that was like negative 50 or 40, 50. I had to, I had to buy special gloves because, um, the gloves that they, uh, that the gloves that they had weren't good enough. And I lost feeling in one of my pinkies for about a couple months. Um, like a borderline frostbite. 
So, yeah. and I would still rather prefer the cold than the heat. So, yeah. Well, so, if, if Worlds is in Europe and it's going to be last quarter, it's going to be cold over there, I expect. I have, I'm down <laughs> for that. I have a question for you, for you guys, actually. Uh, since we don't know where it is in, in Europe, where do you hope it is? And this is a question for the audience as well. So if, if you are listening this far, first of all, thanks for listening, for, you know, an hour in, uh, but an hour, yeah. like an hour and a half. Uh, but also, like, where do you want Worlds to be now that we know that it's in Europe? I have some guesses, but I'd like to hear from you guys first. Um, Ian, you were, well, saying, you were saying something beforehand, weren't you? Yeah, so if I look at it um, from a, from a logistic, not, not even logistics-wise, but if I look at it from player base, passion, numbers, and results thing, I, I feel like Poland is front running. I feel yeah. like po Poland was one of really back when I was working for the company, they were um, honestly one of the the first big adopters in Europe, and and, and they have got some great players. We've seen uh, Team Poland come out and force to all the pro tours and worlds before. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that they would they would absolutely love to um host host worlds i think that'd be great um personally for me um if i was going to travel to europe there's a couple of places that that i'm like if i get to travel to worlds and get to do some stuff would be kind of cool like um i've always personally i've always wanted to go to spain uh, <laughs> uh which would yeah. be cool um uh but also with some of my heritage and stuff i wouldn't be uh, i wouldn't be opposed to it being either in the UK or being like somewhere like Scotland or Ireland or, or Wales. But again, that's more if I can get a trip out of it as well. I, I wouldn't necessarily yeah. say that the, the, the front runners for, for worlds. But um, I think, I think honestly though, I think Poland would be a great shout. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, yeah, you know, Again, there's so many, uh, so many great places in in Europe uh, who who uh, deserve it. I, I'd love, I'd love like Germany or Austria or somewhere like that. These are also places that I'd love to visit as well, mm -hmm. and and could and could put it on on pretty well. But um, again, I those are my thoughts. But as as someone who's a bit closer to to it, what what are your thoughts on where it should should or could be? Yeah, so um, I'm not sure if we captured this before, but we were speaking about it, and yeah, Poland seemed like a good shout because of the uh, fact that the caliber of players that come out of there and the fact that they were early adopters is a really good shout. Um, but I don't know how accessible it is in comparison to other places. But I was speaking to Jim about this because obviously uh, Jim is a, an avid traveler, tra avid traveler, um, oh, yeah. and obviously he's part of your, your 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 separate group chat that you're speaking about earlier. Um, and um, he he seems to think that um, he's he said while well, speaking to him earlier before Azalea Colt, um, which you can now go and view by the way if you're watching this in the future. <laughs> um, he's gonna, he's gonna, he said he calls Munich or Vienna, so that's Germany oh. or Aust or Austria, okay. um, which is like a I think I think it's central central for all the European lot to get there, and it's also a travel hub, so international flights can get into there easy as well. Yeah. Or you can, or you can just train, right? Like if you're you within Europe, you can just train and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My hope, my my initial hope, and this is just because I I just want to go there, is Italy. Yeah. Like I'd love to travel to Italy. Oh um, yeah, that'd be quality. And yeah. I do know there is a decent uh, flesh and blood fan base in in, in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. And then my my second was like actually like Ian said it would be Spain because I, I also think about like oh like what are the top flesh and blood players? Spain, you know. We have a lot of like the the sunflower samurai Pablo Pintor from Spain. Um, yeah. So I think I think that would be that that's a good bet too. Um, honestly, I like Jim's guess um, of like Vienna. Um, it makes a lot of sense because like I know a lot of people are saying Poland. Personally, I don't know a lot about Poland, so I don't, I don't know. But it, it, I, it's not one of the like the the big travel hubs, right? Like it. No. Hmm. Yeah, and, and like yeah. when I when I think oh, about like no. a world event, you want it to be like a place, like a central place that a lot of people could like go to easily and not have to. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Although, as I sort of said to Ad, that that's not always been the MO. 
I know, I know. San Jose? <laughs> well, San Jose is not bad. It's like close enough to like LA and like it's it's a city that has like millions yeah. of people. Yeah. Like it's but, it's a huge city, but 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 ironically, like the distance between sort of LA San Fran would be the same between Poland and several other countries in Europe. Yeah, I mean yeah. the US is the US is big. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I think where wherever it is, um I see I honestly it's it's an awkward thing of when it would be. I I wouldn't want to travel too close to Christmas. Um you know, mm. like I, I kinda I would hope that it would be the same sort of Novemberish time um as it was this year. Um but yeah, I don't know. I, I mean I, again don't really know Europe very well. I've only I've only traveled to Europe once in my life. So um so yeah, you yeah, know, I'd be I, I would be keen for several places in Europe. Um, yeah. yeah. If you look at if you look at where those places are as well that we've mentioned, Austria and Munich. You know, yeah. Vienna and Munich are yeah. literally in the center of Europe. If you look at a Google Maps situation, yeah. they, they are they are smack bang in the middle. Um, but um, another place which which would be quite cool would be, although unlikely, would be Prague or sort of Czech Republic mm. because their beer is extremely cheap, which is always <laughs> good. Uh, that's great. I, um, I either way, this is something we brought up on the, the podcast a few times: is that. Um, me, as, and Bill all want to go to Worlds this year and have like a, a meetup and everything, and so mm-hmm. like I'm still gonna try. Like even though this is like gonna be a lot more expensive for me to travel and again, again it, very that far to travel. Pretty, pretty, but pretty happy that they're gonna announce where it is. Come pro to a um, yeah. pro to Baltimore, so you actually have some time to to a you know check your budget and then b book early enough that you get decent travel travel and stuff yeah it's yeah, like I mean, that's, we, that's you also I mean, have gyms. to get like passports all squared away and all that kind of stuff too yeah so i think i think obviously if if it, you know, it is in europe so the the passport thing needs to be done as soon as as soon as possible really yeah. um to see to see you know to make sure you can go um but um i can't remember what i was gonna say now i was gonna say something i, I, oh, guess, yeah, so... I, I, I guess that's another thing on uh where it might be on which countries have you know strict you know countries that have stricter visa policies to get into is pro- are probably going to be a little bit more discounted than uh, yep. places that are a bit easier to get into and again i'm not sure what that's like in europe i mean i travel on a on a commonwealth passport so we can get in most places fairly easily so yeah um because no one's threatened by the little old New Zealand. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Um, but um, what, what I was going to say was, obviously, if you know, once we find out where it is, depending on who wants to go and when, we could sort of. Well, I know Jim's the master of booking hotels, isn't he? But there might even yeah. be a better solution for everybody to bunk into one Airbnb. Essentially, I was about to say, if there's enough of us going, like the idea of actually getting a house, a house for yeah. for the the thing would I, be pretty cool. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say this now, at least for me. Uh, I guess it depends on where it is, but almost, almost no matter what, I, I want to book extra time to actually mm. oh, um, explore Going the to, place. Yeah. Traveling that far, yeah. Like if if it's in Vienna, Madrid, where wherever, like I, I would love to have extra time to like just you know, ex- yeah, you know, see the sights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Absolutely, I would yeah. almost, I'd almost say, uh, what would be kind of cool because it's going to be in Europe. If you can take an extra week or something leading up to it, as if we did, if we did like a European a European road trip, we I mean, could do it like, oh, like we could go head up, head up a few different armories and and different events in different countries and maybe and oh, uh, so it'd, be, it'd be cool. And if anyone wants to sponsor that travel blog, <laughs> head up, well, head up Red yeah. Road or yeah. Go Again Gaming for, yeah. for uh, we all. We all fly I, in I, I, to yeah, the, yeah. The, the Swindon International Airport, and uh, just, oh, just, wow. yeah, <laughs> I, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, just carpool Swindon with, Russia. carpool with Az uh, all the way, all the way to Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> do like, oh, do like dude. a little challenger series, like a like a, a a content creator challenger series, like 
set up with some stores to have people come. Maybe do like like team sealed or team blitz where we show up and and people can challenge us as a team. Yeah. Uh, and and we could do do some like sponsored the hardest, team gunslinging or something. The hardest part about mm. this is booking all the hotels. That that's just it. Like that's going to so be the hardest part. That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, once we know once we know where it is, Baltimore roll on, so we can find out exactly the logistics of this. Then we yeah. can then we can start reaching out and you know see see what we can do. Um, mm. But um, because because yeah, um, it's going to be good fun. Um, but that's yeah, that's pretty much it really. Um, it's, it's all spe- it's all speculation as to where it's going to be, but um, we do know that for sure. It's going to be in Europe somewhere. Yeah, um, it's. I'm very curious to see the turnout here because we know that a majority of the Flesh and Bloods player base is from the U.S. So I'm very curious to see how many people are going to uh, be willing to travel to Europe for Worlds uh, that aren't actually playing in the main event. Um, so yeah, true. I'm I'm very curious to mm-hmm. see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's, it's 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 cool. It's like you know Michael Hamilton is an American. He won on American soil. Is he the best player in the world if he can also win on European soil as well? So you know it's it's going to be interesting interesting to see you know who and whether whether that makes a difference whether the actual area makes a difference whether because obviously all the people from Europe had to fly over to the United States are all jet lagged and obviously all this and that. Um, so will the soil where you are make a difference? We will yeah. see. You heard it here on Living Legends, as as doesn't think Michael Hamilton's the best player in the world, and that he could have won, <laughs> and that he could have won worlds if uh-huh. he had been in his Absolutely. home city. Absolutely, watch this space as for Worlds Europe <laughs> with his new <laughs> Azalea tap deck. Set it up. That, that that's the road trip. It's just like a best of seven series between at. As in Michael Hamilton in different European countries. I feel sorry for As. I feel sorry. <laughs> oh my god! You're just gonna get oh, you're gonna get like. Just dunked on by Bull Lander seven times in a row. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Brilliant. Um, um, but on that uh, note, the one thing I, I did want to say, uh, the one thing I did want to say about the OP and stuff is that uh, one of the one of the areas that didn't really get mentioned um, was the Asia Pacific area, though there was some. Oh yeah. Uh, there was some. Ink- Explanation that there are going to be a couple of coins in um, uh, in Asia as well as one in Australia, um, with with more announcements. And again, this is what I'm saying: is that it's just logistically, it's a logistics thing that um, LSS doesn't want to announce something unless they have it locked down. Um, and I and I actually think that's a lot better. Like a lot of people, are like, oh, why don't you just like? I think it's a lot better to be like, we're not going to announce it until we know it's going to happen. Then like go here's the calendar for the year and then like three months down the line this this has been postponed this has been moved this, yeah, yeah um which i've seen in other games happen um and so yeah it there's no perfect way of doing it but i feel like i would be more upset if i was like oh in august there's gonna be a melbourne calling and then then come like june they're like oh actually we've got to move it to september and you're like well i've already booked time off and yeah. stuff like that mm-hmm. where yeah yeah where, you know, if in June they're like, oh, by the way, in August there's going to be a Melbourne thing, you're like, oh, cool, well, now I can book that, um, which is, uh, again, as I said, there's no perfect way of doing it, but I, I, I feel like I would rather it this way than the other. Um, I have two things to say about the Asia-Pacific thing. Uh, they both have to do with Japan, because um, we did have the Japanese <laughs> announcement earlier earlier this year, and they did lay out a rough timeline of, like, probably not events this year, but next year, more organized play events in, in Japan. Um, so I personally mm-hmm. don't expect to see more events in Japan until next year. Um, and then also I saw some Japanese people on Twitter, like, really excited about the announcement. Like, I saw some people are like, calling in Japan! Uh, and I, I liked a couple of them, because I was <laughs> like, you, you know, like, the community is there is, like, really looking forward to it. And personally, obviously, I would, that's, like, my, my one place that I would love to go more than others though i like i'd love to go to france as well because i actually speak a little french but Mm. um japan is like i'm going like if the calling in japan i'm gonna go and also it's such a shorter flight for me than than europe (laughs) man europe is like literally on the other side of the world 
for me, like actually mm-hmm. on the other side, because I live in uh, Oregon, right? So I live on the West Coast, like literally on the West Coast. I live in Portland, Port City, West Coast. And so it's like going to Vienna is like, I have to fly across the entire, the entire world. Uh, whereas Japan, I just fly across the Pacific Ocean, right? Like yeah. it's the next closest non-continental country to me other than like, you know, you know, we have, we have South America, we have North America or uh, like Canada. But like, if I'm going to fly off, you know, across the sea or an ocean, uh, Japan and also New Zealand too. Cause they're like, you know, it's, uh, they're like in a, in a line, right? Go to Japan up, you go to New Zealand, you go down. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That, so yeah. 20, 2024, you know, if that's, if, if that is calling Japan, then, then yeah, that's something that, you know, a lot of people are going to want to go to like just, just for the travel experience as well as coupled with flesh and blood. Um, I'm 100% so, going like, that's yeah. the thing where I'm like, I don't care if I like if I have to hawk some of my cold foil alpha cards, I'm gonna go. Like if I have to hawk yeah. my tunic for like five thousand bucks or whatever, how much it's worth, just so I can afford it, I'm, I might do it. So exactly, um, yeah, it's just one, one once a lifetime thing, isn't it? Really, um, yeah. Um, two passions coming together at once. Um, I, I I probably will be going to it as well, but my my girlfriend will probably be coming with me because obviously she wants to go to the just to the just to Japan in general, really. Oh, cool. um, so, um, yeah. Um, as well as that, there's obviously a few more announcements about Brazil and stuff as well. Um, so that's going to be getting support soon as well. Uh, and um, that's it, really, for yeah. for the uh, the OP stuff. Very much looking forward to seeing where it's going to be. And I kind of like I kind of like the fact that it has taken a step back. It's not all you know everything's happening all at once situation. Mm-hmm. It's like they're picking you pick your battles and you know organize time for, to go to the things you need you want to go to or need to go to really. So. I I am a little disappointed. This is very selfish, but it, it, everyone complaining about it is usually, it's usually coming from a very selfish standpoint, to be honest. But um, mm. there's like none on the west coast. Like there's no like unless no. unless we're going to see some more you know events later this year but like there's nothing in like california or oregon or even washington man like what i would give for like a calling in seattle like calling seattle or portland like it would be awesome they're great cities or even like you want to do other places in washington you can do olympia olympia is a great city too but um olympia yeah olympia is, is the capital of washington yeah what was it it yeah. was like mount mount like mount olympus or something it's olympus olympia yeah uh, great song by a great punk band, Rancid. Olympia, Washington. Listen to it; it's great. Um, okay. Hey, gotta stick up for your, your local bands, right? Uh, Speaking of which, know? bands, metal. What's happened recently? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We opened up a um, a flesh and blood metal Discord for fans of metal and flesh and blood. It's mostly metal, less less about flesh and blood, but it's just a place where people can talk about music that they that they enjoy and uh it's actually grown like a decent amount in a, in a short short period of time which i thought was kind of kind of cool and funny uh i should probably yeah. promote it more um but it's been yeah. cool people just like hey check out this band oh i like this band some people are sharing their bands like as uh, and and Bryn, yeah. shout out from from the banner zone um yeah everyone's just sharing their bands and i'm genuinely impressed by a lot of them like some good stuff a- as is um uh, like it sounded like you had like decent recording like quality. You said it was just like in a garage or something, right? Yeah. So so yeah. So my old band. We're going to Arsenal step now by the looks of it. So Ian, you can <laughs> talk. You, you can talk about your thing. I know you had something lined up, but yeah. yeah, yeah sure, regards sure. regards to um regards to that. Yeah. So my drummer essentially had like a, a like a shed outside of his house, which mm. had all of his. He's like a, it was like a soundproof shed. Mm, so that he makes plays, sense. He could play his full drum kit without making any noise, and in that in that shed, he had, he had like his MacBook Pro. He studied music production at uni, so we had all this yeah. sort of set up. So we pretty much did it all ourselves. So if you join the Discord uh, for that, you can you can see it because I don't really share it around too much. I like to reserve it for special occasions. Yeah, uh, it's like a party a party trick that I pull out if I you know if I feel like it. It, um, it was funny because I, I hadn't I hadn't clicked on the link yet, and I was like, oh, which which ones are the best songs that I should listen to? And then I clicked, and there's only like a, yeah. a few. I'm like, well, I'll just listen to all of them. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's only two. There's only two that we recorded, um, but. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. Being in a band's good, but obviously, as you get older, uh, we start. We stopped in 2018, so I was 28 at the time. 
So uh, around about that sort of time, you know, having trying to get five people to come together and practice and, you know, five walks of life trying to do different things. It's just one of those things that's hard, really. It's, you know, it's just one of those things that will dissipates over time. It's like it's like uh, a D&D group, but way more p- a pain in the butt because like you have to exactly. ask. All, you're not just sitting down and rolling dice. <laughs> You have to actually yeah, you like, have to carry your bloody amps around and all that sort of thing. You have to, pra- you have to um, practice and make sure you know what you're doing and like exactly. Yeah, you can't just turn up and use your imagination to slay a dragon or something. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and the re- the reason I bring D and D up is we're we're going to be doing a D and D flesh and blood thing, but also like just scheduling that is already enough of a pain, right? Like just scheduling like five four people, time zones. Yeah, yeah. Just to be in one place at the same time, even in the same time zone. Because when I when I did D and D here locally, like a year or so ago. Um, mm. just scheduling everyone around everyone's work and everything is just a pain in the butt. Like, it is, yeah, you know. that's it. But, but um, let's let's talk about yeah. uh, Ian's arsenal. What, what yeah, you, what you, what you talk about, let's talk about Ian's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, something something cool happened to me um, about a week and a half ago, I guess now, uh, or a couple of weeks since then, uh, in regards to this little game here called. Uh, Super Show the Game, uh, which is a wrestling card and dice game. It's been out almost 10 years now. Um, It's um, a game that I came across uh, at Gen Con probably about seven seven to eight years ago. Um, uh, And it's it's pretty cool. And um, as a wrestling wrestling fan and a card game fan, it's the, the most wrestling based game i've ever played it really captures the feel of it because it's not a turn-based game where you have a turn i have a turn you have a turn uh it is a a dice based game where there's six stats uh each turn you roll the stat and the person who wins the roll uh gets to attack so it really has a flow like a wrestling match where you could hit three or four moves before your opponent actually um fights back um so it actually really captures the flow of how a wrestling match happens. Um, oh. I've been I've been lucky enough to uh, to en- enjoy traveling to Gen Con and stuff and playing in the World Champs. And in fact, I even I even won this belt at uh, <laughs> at a Gen a Con uh, uh, wow. a while back um, for the tor- tornado tag. Um, but one of the things that they do is that the community uh, you can you can get uh, you know. Uh, either by winning tournaments or 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 uh, create a create a wrestler competition um, events or uh, voting things, uh, you can actually become a character in the game. And like, there I am, yeah, like oh, wow. as nice. the, the man from tomorrow. Um, and, but also, quite famously, was my other character, Mike Riot. Um, and this was a character that got two different versions of oh, it. Dude. Uh, and was like your Twitter the, name, isn't it? Your sorry? Twitter name, Mike Riot. Yeah, yeah. So Mike Mike Riot yeah. was my um was my roller derby announcer name, as well as um when I uh when I used to uh, uh do some managerial stuff uh for IPW wrestling, um and um just two weeks ago they had their annual awards, and one of the awards that they have is the Hall of Fame for people who have done done great things in the community and stuff like that and actually um i got inducted into the srg hall of fame which is which is which is super cool i didn't know it was happening um i got sort of sent a link to the um to the award ceremony and um italian bombarda who's one of the original uh one of the original og players uh, did a really nice induction speech uh steve Resk, who is the creator of the game also said some really nice things um uh so that was really cool uh and so i just wanted to give a shout out to srg super show the game go check it out at uh super show uh the game.com if you want to check out a really cool wrestling card and dice game it's not a it's not a tcg so you're not buying blind booster packs but you can buy starter decks and then just buy like the wrestlers that you're interested in and their and and signature moves to make their decks and stuff better um at some point me and kel i will get kel um, some cards, and we'll probably play it online at some point, so we can show it off. But uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I just wanted to say thanks for the honor to SRG. Any of the, uh, any of the SRG, I do know that there are some SRG players that are also fab players. So 
you know, I did want to, you know, it is sort of semi-connected. Um, and yeah, mm-hmm. I just wanted to say thanks to the community for, um, for you know, uh, you know, remembering that I exist because the other, the other thing is in the, in the world of SRG, I'm known as the man from tomorrow because obviously uh, I live in the future. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, I gotcha. Uh, and, and so I, I only, uh, uh, whenever I, I really get to play, it's generally online and, uh, I'm normally again playing from the future. So, uh, so it's kind of cool, but, uh, yeah, that is, that is a, a kind of cool little, uh, thing. Uh, also I just noticed on Facebook, I had, I had a memory come up that, uh, five years ago today, I went five Oh and became the national champ for Heroclix. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to show this little cool, cool dude. This is uh, a micro riot custom made hero click that, uh, that I got made when I became the national champion. So, nice. um, as game, as game as I thought you'd appreciate the, uh, the putting yourself into a game, whether it be CAD game or miniatures it's, game. It's pretty I, cool. I, maybe, maybe dusk path can, uh, can, uh, Oh, you mean, uh, Grim, Grim path? Grim, Grim path. Yeah. Grim path. Maybe, maybe I, I can, uh, talk them into uh something yeah, maybe. Uh, um, that. <laughs> D- dave and i have already been talking and um not me but some of my characters might appear in grim path like uh, yeah. and so but we'll see we'll see i have some ideas for designs on, on in that game and um i've been doing more it, con- it's, oh go ahead, go ahead. yeah it, it, it's cool is that like uh when you're when you're so involved in these sort of hobbies and stuff like that um uh getting getting sort of acknowledgement in games is is, is pretty cool um I, I remember uh playing certain games just because like the world championship like one of the prizes what wasn't big money but it was like you get to either design a card or you got got put into the game and, and like when i first started playing card games like that was my ultimate goal of being like how cool would it be to actually be in the card game like like yeah, I mean, I, I have I have my collab card in in Grand Archive in the first set, and we might have some stuff in Grim Path. Low key, one of my like dreams is to have like some reference to to my channel or my characters in Flesh and Blood. That's that's one of my. I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll happen. I don't think it'll ever happen. But like that's low key like a uh, something that that would be amazing. Like yeah, mm. yeah. I am. Um, yeah. I I I'll go with the fact that. Not that it had anything to do with me at all, but the fact that I look enough like the dude on uh, on uh, on Ragamuffin's hat that oh. I'm like, I'll, I'll claim that as my as my fan as my fan card. Well, I mean, oh, hey, yeah. R- Rudy had Rudy has his own card, so uh, maybe when I get super rich, I can yeah, have well, I can there, have a there, card too. There are a number of cards in the, there are a number of cards in the game that are based uh, for for people uh, that um. Genus, what you need. Yeah, uh, being I heard. Yeah, famously one. Um, also, Stony Wootenhog, which is a really, uh, a really nice call um, callback to a former a former um, player here in New Zealand who passed away uh, a few years ago, who was a big um, a big contributor to TCGs in, um, in in New Zealand. So that was like a nice nod that not a lot of people know about. But um, yes. They are not above putting people from from the the, the community into the game. So, you well, never as soon know. as we see a uh, as soon as we see a mullet, I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'm like keep, keep, a, ma- a massive mallet that says "lovely old job" on it or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like looking at any 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 reference to Rogue or Rogue's Gallery or even like Red Zone. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking out if there's any references to that in the flavor exactly. text or anything. <laughs> Uh, probably, probably not ever. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, who knows? Um, yeah. But um, yeah, mm. yeah. I'm not sure if we have anything else the the arsenal to talk about. I was gonna. I forgot already. I uh, man, I talk enough. I talk enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, that was, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it for today. So um, unless anyone else has got anything else, then um, I'm pretty sure we're happy to. Uh, to end the Living Legends podcast for today. Uh, so I've been your host today. My name's Az from Go Again Gaming. You can find me on Go Again Gaming on YouTube. Uh, and stay stay, uh, uh, stay tuned for that because um, the teaser that was aforementioned earlier will come out after this pod is released. So make sure you go and 
navigate over there if you have not done that already. Uh, it's going to going to be a good one. It's going to um, yeah, very very proud of how it turned out. Um, and yeah, on Twitter, go again gaming AZ is where you can find me, and then I'll throw it over to uh, to Cal next. Hello, I'm Cal, also known as Red Zone Rogue. You might be watching this on my channel or on the Living Legends uh, podcast on. Uh, actually, we, have, we actually have a lot of viewers or listeners who listen on, on Apple Podcasts. Um, so I'm, mm. I'm glad that turned out like my, my hard work of putting it onto all these places actually like is, is fruitful. But um, nice. yeah, shout, shout out to all the only uh, all the uh, audio only listeners. Um, and you can find me if you want to you know, find me anywhere at Red Zone Rogue, mostly on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, I do Facebook and Instagram occasionally, but I usually forget to check those places uh and then <laughs> and I'll, I'll toss it off over to our uh guest host ian uh yeah thanks thanks gal uh you can find me at uh right time gaming on facebook or right time g on twitter because i couldn't fit the rest of the name in that twitter tag oh, annoying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. also mm-hmm. al- also frequently find me on red zone rogues uh, stream sunday streams <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, there, sa- yep. Sunday. Well, out tomorrow, su- after all. Sunday for Ian. Sunday Satur- for Saturday yes. for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he is in the future. Um, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I would uh, say. And, and you and you will be able to find me next week or in a couple of days when uh, when this comes out at the call in Auckland. Come along and say hi. Play some yeah. commoner. Uh, you know, play some ultimate pit fight. And uh, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. Or or for the, for the video listeners out there. Some some uh, some absolute <laughs> chaff, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. <laughs> on on absolutely. the poster that you sent to me as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, earlier poster. That, that um, is that is great. And, and to be to be perfectly honest, uh, uh, Sushi Night is going to be uh, one of the vendors at the calling who were the originators of nice. Chaff Goblin. So so yes, definitely. If you if you want to play some Chaff Goblin, I'm always down. For that, uh, especially since one of the events on uh, on day one uh, on the Friday is uh, WTR sealed, so so yeah. people will have chaff. So that'd be that'd be kind of cool. Plenty of chaff yeah. hanging around. Lovely old job. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much been it for Living Legends podcast. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ke- hey. Kel and Bill will be get, will be getting those will be getting those they'll be set, being sent out on Tuesday. So Next time you do that, those, can I can I get a New Zealand flag for the the like, like, yep. like just yep. for like the sometimes that <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. that's not a bad idea actually. I wish I thought about that before. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much, everybody who's tuned in. And uh, is there a word that people can that people can put in the bottom there for mm. people we- who've listened this far? Well, we'll have to edit their comment because we already asked them to list where they would like worlds to be in Europe. Um, That'll do then. You know what? You yeah. you could you could do that, and then also add what what food you want to eat at that place. There you go. Oh, good. Like, yeah. Honestly, there is a lot of the, the places I want to go because um, uh, I wanted I want to eat cuisine from those Italy. places. Italy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Spain, Spain. I I, I love paella. I, I'd love to get a uh, you know traditional paella in Spain. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I'll leave a comment in the section below. It's where you want to be. What what you want to eat? Lovely old job. That's pretty much it for today. So thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye. 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 Jason. Jason. Sean. Jason. <laughs> Ian Jason. probably has no idea what the hell we're doing. Jason!